Hello and welcome to Peabody TV's 15 Minutes of Fame. I'm Jackie Ankeles. The program features people on the North Shore with an interesting hobby or skill or who've accomplished something unusual. It's fun to be able to share local people's stories with you and to recognize some of the special things that they do. So today we're going to meet Len Burgess. He's a Danvers resident, but enjoys a lot of time at the Teregion Life Center here in Peabody. So we decided to have our conversation right at the Senior Center. We're going to see some of the beautiful model ships that Len has built, and we'll also see some of his extraordinary photographs of ice crystals, a technique that has earned him the nickname, the Iceman. I've never seen anything like it before. Between the two skills, Len's boat building and his ice crystal photography, we could easily go in either direction for this program. But I thought we could try to find some common ground between the two and enjoy some of each. So, let's go. Thank you for Agreeing to share some of your handiwork with us. Okay. I'm really looking forward to this. To it. Yeah. Hope you are. Well, I had a choice whether to have you show us your model ships or your ice crystal photographs. So I chose both. <laughs> I just wanted to see if there was some kind of a connection between the two. There's some kind of a common thread, so yeah. we'll see what happens. Okay, all right. <laughs> You've been retired for a number of years now. Yes, what did I you have. do prior to your retirement? Uh, I had a graphic design studio. I was in, in advertising graphic design. I okay. had a studio mm -hmm. and then that agency uh, since 1967, actually. And was that local? <laughs> It was in Boston. Okay. Yeah, and um, I started out with a uh, with a partner for about ten years, and then we both went on our own. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was Burgess Associates uh, after that. You, have you been involved with art all your life since a child? Since you were a child, you must. Be. Yes. Uh, um, when I was nine, I came down with uh, rheumatic fever. Oh my goodness! And I, I was in bed uh, for three months, basically, on on the sulfa drug because they didn't have penicillin. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And so my mother had her job to try to keep <laughs> me doing something. She gave me all kinds of things I do with my hands and to draw and, and okay. to and to also sketch and do stuff like that. So I got into it. I think at that point in time. And uh, also, I, I used to work with my father in the in the cellar. We had a nice uh, bench down there. We'd make uh, you know outside furniture, birdhouses. Oh, so good! I was yeah. building and, and using constantly your hands. all the time. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And then you went to college for art, or what? I, yes. What happened was uh, my art teacher in high school sort of stepped in because my mother and father didn't know how to do me getting into college or whatever, and she right. says, you're going to go to Mass <laughs> Really? And she did everything that she possibly did, you know, as far as forms and everything. Miss Susadale, thank God. Isn't that something? <laughs> and that started my, really, everything I've done. Now, I'm curious how you got into model shipbuilding. My sons had, had bought me a, uh, a model uh, a kit? A, a kit. Yeah. And uh, it had been in the attic. I never did it because I was busy <laughs> in my business. Okay. It stayed in the attic for, I don't know, since 1984. And I think 2013, I... Oh, that's a I, long I, lot I, of dust. <laughs> <laughs> I was working with the grandkids. Joanne came up with the boat out of the attic said, you should build this with the kids. And I said, no, I'm not going to build it with the kids. This is... <laughs> for know, me. Yeah. So I started that's building and I really liked it. Uh, okay. From then, uh, my friend Tony and Dave that said there's a there's a show at the, the Council on Aging in Peabody, okay. and yeah. uh, so I went over to the show and I met some people there. Met one of the, the leaders there, and next thing I know, we started working there. And you got involved. Yeah. Well, building model ships really is kind of an unusual hobby. What does it take to build a model ship? I mean, what? skills of yours have you found helpful in building boats well, personally? I mean, 
I guess I'm detail oriented for one thing, and I, uh, I'm sort of a perfectionist, and I end up when I do build the boat to do things over two or three times because I'm not okay. happy with what you got I got it. So it's the boat. it's well, just incredible. Well, this was a kit uh, that I mentioned I got from my my sons, and uh, it was the first model, pretty big model that I'd ever done okay. like this. And I really, the way that the kit was put together and the, the instructions and all, it was a, it was a really a pleasure to do. And it was a, <clears throat> it was big enough size so you don't get into really a lot of little, little tiny. Little small, tiny. But stuff. there's a lot of, there are a lot of tiny things inside. There are some, yes. Lobster traps are, those are the old style. And it even has a lobster in there. But anyway. <laughs> you brought another one. Well, what is this one? Uh, this is the uh, Phyllis A. Okay. It's a gill netter, and the reason that I, uh, I chose this boat, because it has a history, and I like to build boats that have some meaning, not just build a, a, a boat, okay. you know, from a kid or something. So there was no models of this. They had a plan of the, of the, of the hull, but nothing else. And they're happy are to they work. still restoring the boat? They still are. It's, uh, Gloucester Marine Railways up mm -hmm. in uh, Rocky mm -hmm. Neck in Gloucester. Mm -hmm. That's okay. I mean, you can go in there and see it actually uh, in the yard. How do you choose what boats you want to build? What do you consider when you're going to start a project because you're going to spend so much time on it, and live with yeah. it and for so long? They, they run out for a long time. Yeah. A uh, kit maybe eight months and Sometimes uh, eight months. Some, well, that that my first boat, uh, that oh. lobster boat, was eight months, but because um, I was just getting into it. But if you, if you're actually doing a scratch built boat, it's almost like digging into the very foundation of the thing. I mean, you got to you got plans and everything else to 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 uh, to work from. Okay. So okay. Uh, yeah, and, and it's uh, it's just more difficult to to do that, you know. Now, one of your boats, I believe, is on display at the Essex Shipbuilding Museum. In Essex. That's the Lewis Lewis H. Story. Lewis, Lewis H. Story. Story, yes. How did you come to build that? I mean, that's impressive. People can go look at it there. But yeah. is there a well, story behind the story there? I have to say that. <laughs> that's right, behind the story, yes. Uh, I joined the Essex Shipbuilding Museum back in 2006, I think, and uh, being part of the museum, they take you out in their, their boat, the Lewis Story, which they had built okay. in 1998. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I just kind of fell in love with this boat. Okay. So when it came to the point of actually building a boat from nothing, I didn't see any models of that particular boat anywhere. So I got a plan from them, which was plan for the hull, and uh, then you make the pieces from the plan, okay. and then and then you have to uh, start to build those together as best you can, and then you have to uh, design the, the whole deck of the boat. The problem with the Lewis story was there was <clears throat> there was no plan for the deck of the boat. It was up in Harold Burnham's head. Oh. <laughs> he was the builder. And uh, so I had, the boat was being uh, reconstructed in the yard for almost three years. So I was able to climb oh, on board for I see. a lot of time. I took about 50 or 60 photographs of all the parts on the boat, uh, on the deck, and I also measured all of these different parts, oh and, and then bring them down into the scale. That the scale I work was uh, for that boat was uh, three eighths to an inch. Okay. And okay. Uh, from the photograph that I had of the of this the um, the deck, I was able to build these uh, you know build these to to look like what they really look like. Okay. And what material? Would you use from scratch? Well, mostly you use a basswood. Is what Bass you use basswood? Okay. Yeah, and okay. it's a and you use like a sixteenth of an inch planking to go on the sides of the boat. Okay, so I'm thinking now you have to be creative. Yeah. You have to be artistic. You have to be technically competent with the math and the scales and everything. You have to use your hands skillfully, so we're gonna hold that thought and then move on to see okay. about your ice crystal right. photographs, okay? Right. See why you're called the Ice Man. The Ice Man. You know, I, I have to tell you, when I first saw 
your ice crystal photographs. I couldn't believe how beautiful they were. Yeah, yeah. And I couldn't believe how you actually found that to, to, to photograph this. Yeah, yeah. How did you discover or um, come upon that kind of niche photography? You don't see that. No. Well, it all, it all stems from, I guess, when, uh, when I'm a kid and also when I was first married, I had a house in Stoughton and it didn't have any storm windows and those windows <laughs> used to just, in the winter, you'd get these forms of ferns and whatever. And uh, I thought that was wonderful and I would like to capture it somehow, oh, but I really yeah. didn't have the cameras mm -hmm. and stuff to mm -hmm. do that. Mm -hmm. So I guess probably 2012 when I uh, was working with a, a friend of mine, he had a digital Did camera. Yes. So when I got a digital camera, all of a sudden I could just shoot, shoot, shoot. And, uh, and I could be real, get up real close. The first one I had was a, a Canon G9, I could get that close to these little things on the window. And I, my house in, in Danvers doesn't have the, uh, the new thermal kind of windows. <laughs> it has old storm windows. Good. So oh, in between the, the window <laughs> and the storm windows, it all frosts That's up. That's what happens. And I had over yeah. seven windows in my house that would frost up in the winter. <laughs> that, <laughs> that's what that's once amazing. I found out that I could shoot them, I yeah. never wanted to change them. Yeah. Now. How was it to make the transition from digital to after so many years of film photography? That's a yeah. huge transformation. Yeah. You obviously embraced it. Yeah. Well, look at what happens when you're working with film. I mean, you got to wait for the thing and, and everything. <laughs> I mean, when I was a kid, you'd make a, a shot and you'd have to wait. And uh, you'd know, sometimes I get the things back in the little package from Elf's photo, and it'd be blank. <laughs> oh, I hadn't no. done something. You know? Yeah. <laughs> so and you only had like what up to thirty six. You know, yeah. pictures. Of so now you can just shoot and shoot right, and shoot. Right. Yeah, which so, was great. So you started to say about how close you have to be with the technique for the ice crystals. Yeah. Right? Well, uh, to. It, it's a it's a project to do that sort of a problem in a way I had to figure out. But you can't use a tripod or anything because okay. you have to hand hold these things, and and they have to be early in the morning for one thing. And and you're looking for the kind of lighting. The lighting can't come from inside the house. The lighting comes from the outside through the ice. So you're looking for as you move along uh, in, in the very small areas. There's all kinds of lighting coming in and out from uh, from outside, and you're trying to get even like a blue fence across the street. You can the ice picks it all up all through. That's what I noticed yeah. about your photographs. Yeah. The lighting didn't look real, <laughs> and now you're no, describing it, how yeah. it bounces off, it reflects. Yeah, all the you'll see in in, in the, the the pictures we have that mm -hmm. uh, different different forms of, of the ice pick up different areas of the light that's coming in, different colors and all, so it's, it, it doesn't look real in a way, yeah. I'm surprised they're actually so different from one another. How is And I try to do that. I, how I, do you do well, that? I'm moving, I'm moving slowly across a window and trying to find something, and it changes as I move. All the lighting changes as I'm moving. Uh -huh. and, and finally you get something that really looks good to me, you know. And um, that's how I shoot. I, even in, I had one window in the morning that was right good for the sunrise. So when I was shooting, <clears throat> there would be the sun coming coming up from oh, the trees or beautiful. something, so you can get that also. And then the the ice would really reflect all that out through, you know. And I, I mean, it, as far as how I shoot them, I have to get up early for one thing. Okay? <laughs> <clears throat> you're up early in the morning, and you're looking for the temperature. They have to be in the teens or single numbers. Single numbers are better. And once I know from the weather forecast. It's going to be single numbers, and I'm ready the next You're morning. I'm going to be ready to go. <laughs> so I'm up in my bathroom. I don't even rest. I'm in my bathroom, and I'm scouting all the windows to see what I would like to shoot. And I and I shoot uh, several of the windows, or maybe all of them. It all depends because they're only going to last them uh, maybe uh, two hours. The sun's going to melt them. Okay. The sun will and then they're gone. And, and they're gone. They're gone. So I'm capturing something that's 
nature has provided, uh, and, and that's what I, it's exciting to me, and I, I just love it. Just and love each it. one of them is so one of a kind. Yeah. They, like uh, a snowflake. Yeah. <laughs> right. right, well, do you always carry a camera with you? Even in your when you're not in your bathrobe. <laughs> well, I did uh, a lot, and, but in, or your in phone. the late, later years, <laughs> I haven't as done as much. But um, I mean, I have uh, my camera is is also used in a, a bunch of other things that I do. You okay. know, as far as what what is your favorite was, camera right now? Uh, well, I've got a, a, a Rebel Canon a SL1 that I use. It's not a super expensive thing or anything like that. But you're comfortable, but it, with, you're comfortable it. with it. And I have a long 300 millimeter lens with it also. Okay. And okay. which I use, I shoot the Gloucester Schooner Festival okay. <clears throat> every mm -hmm. year. So that's great. I go out on the schooners and uh, try to get good shots of the schooners. Well, it sounds like photographing ice crystals satisfies your creative urge as does model shipbuilding, yeah, and definitely. it uses your technical skills, as right. does model shipbuilding, it does. and it needs your artistic eye, right. as does model shipbuilding. Right. So, right. I think we have found some common ground between is. the two. <laughs> and uh, one thing is for sure, though, you're an extremely talented man, and well, thank you. I'm just. I mean, it's something I've been that came from my childhood, you know. Yeah, really? this has been yeah. a thrill for yeah. me, to, uh, a real pleasure. Yeah. Uh, I hope you continue with both hobbies. I plan to, yes. Okay, yeah. not for your, just your own enjoyment, but for others' <laughs> enjoyment yeah. as well. Yeah. So thank you, Len. Oh, you're thank welcome. You. You're welcome. We've been talking with Len Burgess, and that's going to do it for this edition of Peabody TV's 15 Minutes of Fame. I'm Jackie Angeles. Be sure you join us next time to find out who gets to enjoy 15 Minutes of Fame? And if you know someone on the North Shore who has an interesting hobby, skill, or accomplishment, we'd love to hear from you. Just go to peabodytv.org slash 15 minutes.